Well, I got the shop cleaned, so of course it's time to make more dust. We're gonna guide coat this hood, start blocking on it. We still got a ways to go. We got it in the first primer just to lock everything down. So let's get to it. yesterday got a few spots to knock out but overall it turned out really good so we'll get those sanded down and we'll be ready for primer on this thing again So what I'm doing now is going around sanding the jams. I've got the rockers up. I got it on the rotisserie so I can get to the rockers where I needed to get to and sand those, get those straightened out, sand all the jams, sand the firewall, and we're gonna put probably three coats of VP2050 on here and keep going. I got the hood ready for primer. I'm sanding on the cab now. I'm gonna work a little bit of filler here and there, nothing major, and get that ready for primer. I'm not gonna prime today. It's really wet outside. And last time, last year about this time, I primed one in the same sort of conditions. And that's what happened. Take a look at it if you want to. Anyway, we're not going to let that happen again. We're just going to get everything ready. When we have a nice dry day, we'll get everything primed. So let's keep going on the cab. So this right here is exactly why I've built rotisserie. Accessibility and comfort. I can get to every spot I need to get to, and I can do it in a way that I'm comfortable. I don't have to really stretch out. I don't have to 
try to reach something. If you can't reach something, you're probably not gonna spend enough time on it to get it as good as it needs to be. So if you can make it where it's more comfortable, get it right in your face where you can see it, you can do a better job, simple as that. Well worth the time and effort I put into it. So here's another example, the bottom of the rocker, so much easier to get to when it's not on the bottom anymore. Hey, here's a quick tip that I've found works really well. If you got some old screwdrivers or tools that the handle's getting slick, wearing out, doesn't quite have the grip that it used to, I simply leave mine on the floor of the shop. I find them in the yard the next day and they've been re-gripped. More texture added. Pretty cool. So while I got this thing upside down, I'm gonna start doing the seam sealer. Do this drip rail first. That way it's gonna flow out really nice and look really good while it's upside down. I build self-leveling. Snap off the, the end. Don't forget you got to you got to equalize the tubes. Once you get that air bubble out, clean it up. Put our mixing tip on. Now we're gonna make sure it's mixing. So right after I wipe it on there, I'm pulling the tape. The sooner I get the tape off, the more the edge is gonna lay down and the smoother it'll be. It can always be sanded after it's dried, but the smoother you get it, the less sanding you're gonna have to do. If you wait too long, it gets stringy, it makes a mess. I'm going to pull it pretty quick and that edge will smooth right down. It's super smooth. Had to widen it out a little bit down here just to cover up some imperfections. And that's just going to make it look even better. So when I do my seam sealer, I'm not trying to make it look seamless. I think if I wanted it seamless, I would weld up the seam and slick it out with some filler, whatever it took. I'm really just trying to make it look like a really good, clean seam sealer job. That's why I like using the self-leveling, either high build or just self-leveling because it smooths out so nice. It does most of the work for me. The object is just a good, clean seam sealer. You should know there's a seam there. I don't think you should be trying to make it disappear. You're just trying to make it look clean. While I'm taping this up, I do take this opportunity to straighten things out. So if I've got a seam that, you know, the edge of the metal is kind of jagged, I'll make that edge straight with my tape and the seam sealer will straighten that out for me. So you're kind of, I guess, camouflaging the flaws of the body where it comes together. Just trying to make it look really good. So where it's got hiccups and bumps, I tape it so that I straighten that out. 
We got the cowl, seam sealed. Time to scuff it all down, tape it up, and prime this thing. Gotta love that rotisserie. I like it. So just some terminology in case you don't know, when you go around and you tape like this, tape to the back side of something and leave the sticky side exposed, it's called back taping. Pretty simple. Some people may not know that, but we'll back tape all the way around this thing so that we get primer all the way up to the edge. And we'll put some plastic over this. Everything's taped up. It's time to get some primer on this thing. Here we go. Hopefully I've got one more sanding and priming. The jams be ready. A couple places to touch up the seam sealer a little bit. Everything's looking nice. Mm -hmm. 